While leaving the temple, the disciples asked Jesus, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Matthew 24 verse 3. We can't know exactly the day or the hour that Jesus returns, but we can discern the season just like when he told his disciples when the fig tree is budding. You know spring is here and summer is soon. The same way when we see these signs taking place, we know that the return of the Lord and the last days are imminent. Here's 10 signs of Jesus' return. The worldwide preaching of the gospel. Jesus said the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. Matthew 24 verse 14. This is a major key signaling the end of the age and the return of Jesus. With the development and spread of the internet and satellite television, the worldwide preaching of the gospel is made possible. With all the evils these tools bring, they have also caused the gospel to go all over the world. It's important to note Jesus was not saying in Matthew 24, 14, every individual would necessarily have to hear the gospel before the end of the world to come, but that the gospel would be preached in all the world. This without a doubt is currently taking place. Intense spiritual conflict and warfare. The Bible says that in the end, the devil will come down to earth having great wrath, knowing that his time is short. Revelation 12, 12. During this time, there will be an increase of conflict in the lives of believers like never before in history. The important thing is that we continue to praise God in the midst of it. Hebrews 13, 15. These signs signal that Jesus will return soon to give us the ultimate victory and rest. 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 through 7. Because just like Jesus told us, for they who endure to the end will be saved. Matthew 24, 13. The Internet. In Revelation 11, John describes the two witnesses of the last days that are given power similar to that of Moses and Elijah to display signs and wonders and miracles. At the end of their time of prophesying to the world, the Antichrist has them killed and their dead bodies lay in the streets three and a half days with the whole world watching. The world not only watches but rejoices over their death and exchange gifts to one another in celebration. At the end of the three and a half days, they stand on their feet and ascend in a cloud out of everyone's sight, and their enemies saw them. Revelation 11:12. At the time John penned this, it would have been impossible for the entire world to view this event. Today it is common via the internet and television. Scoffers Peter said that in the last days there would be scoffers saying, where is the sign of his coming? 2 Peter 3, 3-5 three it's amazing how many people mock the things of God all throughout social media and by celebrities in the mainstream media, and one of the only groups of people you can actually publicly make fun of is Christians. An explosion of knowledge. With the internet and other technological advancements, knowledge is increasing exponentially on a daily basis. Daniel 12.4 Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. The speed of travel. During Bible times, the fastest mode of travel was by horseback. Now people are traveling at high rates of speed every day by cars and airplanes. Cars alone would have blown people away just a little over a hundred years ago, and yet God foretold traveling at high rates of speed over 2,000 years ago in the same verse Daniel 12 verse 4. Wars. Matthew 24 verse 7. We've had 9-11, the Gulf War, Iraq, the threat of nuclear strikes from Iran, ISIS threatening people in the Middle East, beheading people from the US and the UK, and threatening to come to the United States. Along with these, we already have what they consider so-called lone wolf attacks. There were the attacks in Paris, San Bernardino, Orlando, and they continue all the time. There are threats of cyber attacks which could potentially knock out much of a country's infrastructure. On top of all these are nuclear threats, the height of terror. It is amazing to me that thousands of years ago, God describes perfectly the effects of a nuclear disaster in Zechariah 14, verse 1. He begins by declaring the day of the Lord is coming, and in verse 12, he says that their flesh shall dissolve while they are standing on their feet, their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. It sounds exactly like the description of a nuclear bomb going off. We also have Ukraine and Russia in a current state of war, with the continued talk of World War III coming at any moment. Natural disasters, Matthew 24, 7 through 8. Natural disasters have come at us in full force in recent times. Hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, plagues, high winds, extreme temperatures, extremely hot, extremely cold. The list of natural disasters goes on and on, and absolutely seems like it has been on the increase in recent times. Deception. The increase of cults and deception is a sign that the coming of Christ is near. Jesus and Paul and John emphasize this in Matthew 24, verse 4 through 5. 10 through 11, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3, 1 John 2, verse 18. John said that there would be many antichrists. Paul declared that there would be a falling away from the faith. People are being deceived in unprecedented numbers, from traditional cults which are merely an error doctrinally, to Islam who is not only an error doctrinally but desired to take over the world and kill all those who do not believe, infidels, and serve their false god Allah. Jesus said that many would come in his name claiming that they were actually the Christ or claiming that he was the Christ. Now I don't know about you, but I haven't heard of many actually saying they were Christ. 
but I've heard plenty allude to the fact that they were sent or anointed ones. And we have people in other religions indicating that they are the chosen ones and that they have the true revelation of God. There is also a general deception coming upon the world. There seems to be a blindness and skills over the eyes of much of the world today. People who once seemed to have a clear understanding of the things of God in the spiritual realm are losing all sense of enlightenment. Some of this could be because they are never truly born again. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. This can also be the end time blindness the God of this world is bringing, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-11 Many people these days are also being deceived into the New Age movement and the false spirituality, a type of supernatural understanding where they are getting these visions and connections to the spirit world, but through a demonic nature such as astral projection and channeling. Also to mention one of the largest deceptions going on in the world these days is politics. People are completely obsessed on one side or the other to live by the political line that their party touts. Currently in America, the largest false false god and false idol that people are following is politics and the mainstream narrative. Israel becoming a nation. God told Israel that he would scatter them as a result of their rebellion. We know that they lived in various places all over the world until 1948, when they became a nation again. Since that time, the Jews have headed back to Israel in unprecedented numbers. In Ezekiel 37 and Matthew 24, 32-35, Israel is referred to as a fig tree. Fig tree in scripture usually symbolizes Israel. And Jesus declares that when you see these things take place, they are becoming a nation again, that generation would not pass away until all things were fulfilled. U.S. Embassy being moved to Jerusalem is at the height of prophetic fulfillment. U.S. Presidents have been promising to move our embassy to Jerusalem for generations. When President Trump promised to move our embassy to Jerusalem, he apparently meant it. On May 14, 2018, the embassy was officially moved to Jerusalem and dedicated. It's interesting that its dedication just happened to fall on May 14. The diplomatic recognition of the State of Israel, the international recognition of Israel, established by the Israeli Declaration of Independence, was on May 14, 1948. The dedication of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem was exactly 70 years to the day of Israel's Declaration of Independence and the international recognition of the State of Israel. I doubt that President Trump realized the extreme significance of this in the fulfillment of the prophetic calendar, but God did. God does work in numbers and dates, so when it lines up like this perfectly, it absolutely seems like it's something that's being done by the providence of God. Again, no one knows the day or the hour that these things will take place, not even Jesus, but God in heaven alone. But as we move closer, just like Jesus told us to watch for these signs and these seasons, and he told us that just like the fig tree, when we see it budding, we know spring and summer is near. In the same way, when you see these signs, you know that your Lord is coming. Be in right standing with the Lord Jesus Christ because time is definitely short. Thanks for watching and God bless.